Take one. We're here with Eric Martin Brown. Eric, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Good, good. What do you do, Eric? I am an actor, professional actor. And why do you do that? Why do you act? Well, um, the real bottom line is I like telling stories. My job is uh, being a collaborator with others, trying to tell a good story. Theater is a wonderful medium for that in the sense that, um, you know, I, I always see it as a job, you know, uh, even though I'm sort of, you know, an artistic expression, I, I'm one of many people in this sort of crazy cog who come together and bring their skills, whether they're designers or actors or directors or engineers or, you know, stagehands, whatever they do. and come together and try and tell a specific story. And uh, I really love that collaborative aspect of it. And then also I'm fortunate enough that I travel a fair amount with my work. And I have the freedom to do so right now. And that enables me to also uh, visit places that maybe I wouldn't normally visit. And I feel like I bring something to the community. It's not just about uh, coming to a town and just sort of seeing it. But I feel like I'm there for a while. I have a chance to, uh, to bring something. I really enjoy that. Okay. Now you say you you know you do a lot of traveling. Does it ever get to you? Like you yeah, know you I mean, come into a town and you know for a few weeks, three four weeks, and then you got to leave. How did how, how do you handle that? Well, it's a bit of a peripatetic life in the sense that you know, it isn't the best on uh, one's personal life. Um, in the sense that uh, you know, you're trying to have a girlfriend or something, you go away, you come back, you go away. But in some ways, I've worked pretty hard to get to this point. It's something I always knew I wanted to do ever since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I went to school for it. And I tried to do it for a little while. Yeah. And then I realized I needed to really work on it, so I went to graduate school. Okay. And uh, when I got out of graduate school, I really felt like I had a tool belt to work with, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, it's a job. And it's a very competitive job. Right. Anything in the arts, I think, is. So I'm not doing it to get rich. I'm doing it because it's something that I really enjoy doing. Have to, I think, have that that passion to sort of keep at it. Sure. And uh, sure. and so through travel, um, I'm sort of living some of the things I really aspire towards, and I don't take that for granted. That's good. That's good. I guess the key question is, if you didn't get paid for what you do, would you still do it? Oh, I'm sure I would. Yeah. Okay. I mean, do you think that I've done jobs in New York where I haven't gotten <laughs> right. paid very much at all? But right. it's it. I mean, it really is. Uh, about, it's about storytelling for me, it really is, and, and, and I, not just in the theater medium, I've done some television you know, stuff. You know, tell us about your TV work, what, what, what type of TV work have you done? Ah, uh, what have I done? I've done a couple episodes of the New York based shows, I played a sort of a, a silent assassin on a Law and Order Criminal okay. Intent. Okay, okay. I played a guy in, uh, in jail, breaks his arm, and got into a fight, and the show uh, Third Watch, which is like yeah. it's now. Yeah, um, it's a good show, by the yeah. way. It's yeah, it was a very show. good show. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, I've done little spots on some soap operas and okay. stuff. And, okay. um, I've done some independent films. And okay. Things. Well, um, you know, again, it's just uh, hopefully finding a good story to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about auditioning. Okay. The whole process of auditioning. What do you, how do you feel about that? It's madness. It's insane. You know, you go in, right, you have two, three minutes to do your little razzle-dazzle in front of strangers. But at the same time, I mean, I think I used to be very, you know, anxious about it. And sometimes you still get nervous, especially if there's a job you really particularly want. But the more I just try and really, uh, you know, I always make sure that I really read the script. I give myself some time to think about it. But this is where having faith in where I sit in myself comes about because also I, could, I think about some ideas, I try and make them specific. And then I go in and I do what I had imagined. As long as I go in there and feel like I put forward what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. then that's it. It's out of my hands. Yeah. And oh. casting directors see that. Well, I mean... 
or do they? Some do. I mean, I, I you know, mm. uh, I think, uh, I think you can be a terrific actor. You can go in and do a great job and still not be right for the role. Or you know, you look like the casting directors, you know, X, or yeah, or you look too much like their brother. You know, there's so Does many. That there's so Does many that happen, elements. Really? Oh sure. I mean, I think there's so many elements, and that's the hardest thing. The hardest thing as an actor is the level of rejection. The best example I had a teacher give me once. He said, "Just say in a year you." Book, you know, two theater jobs and maybe a commercial and you do like a little TV thing and then you do like a little free theater thing. Was that a good year as an actor? Like, yeah, I guess that's pretty good. It's like, okay, so what is that, five jobs? And maybe <laughs> in that year you go on a hundred auditions? Yeah, yeah. That's a 95% rejection rate. That's yeah. a good year. Yeah, really? So, thinking it in those terms yeah. and having an understanding that it's, you just have to keep having faith in what you bring to, into the room. And because there's so many things that you have no control over, mm -hmm. and you'll make yourself nuts. And it's still hard to be rejected. No one likes to get rejected, sure. especially if you want to be a part. Of it. But there's a certain level of you go in, you give it your best. I mean, you really give it, and then you gotta let kind of let it go. Just let it go. Yeah. And I do things. I make sure, like after an audition, I treat myself well. I'll take myself out to a nice lunch, or I'll go see some friends that I want to see. I make sure that I take care of myself. And also, the key to being an actor, I believe is to have a life that also has other things in it that are not dependent upon anyone else's yay or nay. Mm -hmm. Meaning, have, have, I have hobbies now that I do, I have other artistic ways that I express myself that I generate, and I have a life that is where my happiness is not dependent upon getting, that job. getting a job yeah. anymore. That's I mean, that is so important. Yeah. Because that too gives a level of liberation. Otherwise, it's like trying to go on a date and you're really desperate. It's like, hi, do you want to? Yeah, you blow it. Me? It's done. I'm, I'm really, it's over. You know, so forget it. Forget it's it. Over. You're not, yeah. you're not, you're not yeah. getting a date. You're not getting a job. And that level of energy is job. just, it's just. I mean, we all know that energy. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's crucial because it can be you know, brutally hard. Those, that level of rejection, mm -hmm. especially, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're not immediately finding a lot of opportunities yeah. coming to you. What do you suggest then for up-and-coming actors, uh, 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 actors just getting out of school and looking for jobs and looking for roles? What do they do? You know, I, and I ask this question to a lot of people, a lot of actors that I talk to, and you seem to have a unique perspective on it. If, yeah, yeah. And what do you think they should do? Well, it's a very hard thing. First of all, you come out of school, especially coming out of training programs. It's, it's ridiculously vulnerable time because maybe you've done a little presentation, some casting people have seen you, or agents have seen you, and you're going around trying to meet them. And but no one teaches you how to sort of suddenly have a life. And, and, and sort of, you've been in this program, and, and maybe you were like the one who got cast all the time, or you feel it. But suddenly you're in this massive fishbowl. And the, I think the sooner can give yourself some things that are going to help you be rooted, meaning I think it's actually important to go get a day job mm -hmm. because it gives you a place to put some focus. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about being settled. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean settled in satisfaction, mm -hmm. but I, I, I'm always asking questions. Mm -hmm. I am definitely an actor who doesn't lock up. I'm always asking questions. Mm -hmm. I am definitely an actor who doesn't lock a performance. Well, that's it, everybody. That's going to do it for this episode of The Actors Lounge. I'm your host, Tony Langford, and we'll see you next time. Please hang up and try again.